Hello, and welcome back to another Breezy Cast. Today we have two of TA's finest, two gladiators going at it on the map Bermuda Locket. Um, so if you take a look at this map, it might look like um, something I don't want to say it, but uh, if you take a close enough look at it, you can probably figure out what I'm, what I'm thinking here. Um, um, but let's in, let's just introduce our players here. We have Tag Rock in the orange playing as Arm, and in the bottom right we have Oz Cool Nick um, playing in the yellow, also as Arm. So let's take a look here. This is a Supreme Commander remake as well. So, and the map is also made by Tag Rock. So it's. Um, I believe this map, it, it's, it can actually play out pretty cool 4v4, but it's also a pretty cool design because it can do 2v2, v2, v2. Um, and uh, at least in Supreme Commander, when I used to play it way back when, this is probably like one of, uh, probably one of my favorite maps to play. Um, I know Timmy Fred would probably disagree with that statement, but hey, we all have our own tastes. And Rock's going to open up with Vehicle. So this is a pretty long game. I did skim through this one. Um, I did watch a good amount of this game. And it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a banger, guys. So, And uh, I did have some recommendations to uh, not have any background noise music. So I'm going to give this a try and let me know what you guys think of it. We're going to get immersed in the gameplay, into the game sounds. So embrace the silence. The quiet moments. So Rock's sending a Jeffy each way. And this is just to see um, where Koenig's sending his cons, his units, etc. He's trying to figure out uh, which way Koenig's going to expand. Personally, I think I like the K-Bot opener better. Um, they just... In terms of like movement, they just move smoother they don't have to do like this these wide turns um and honestly that can save a lot of time especially on a map like this where there's a lot of hills and lumps and stuff where vehicles kind of get a little clumsy uh, so i do prefer kbot here and they're just cheaper so like peewees are cheaper than flashes so you can probably spam a lot more of them pretty fast the rock does sneak in a, a jeffy here And he's gonna get this metal extractor. That's a like it's that's a good pickup. Um, and Kulnik doesn't have any radar, so he didn't see that coming at all. So that's actually very annoying for Kulnik. Um, you know, stuff like that can actually it, it can change your build from stalling to you know, or from not stalling to stalling, like losing a mech set early. Um, but there is a lot of reclaimable rocks around on this map, as you can see. There's here's one, and Ro he uh, Kulnik has reclaimed a couple more over here, and he does take out the scouts. Uh, I believe this one died as well. Yeah. So as you can see, it looks like I mean honestly, both players have expanded in about the same rate. Um, both are taking this section of the map where there's two rich uh, deposits and uh, they're working on taking this little uh, I guess you'd call the left side of the ball sack and rocks taking the right side of his ball sack now cool Nick's gonna push in with some peewees it's gonna get a nice round on that flash and this is what I like about K-Bot. You can just mass so many Peewees pretty quickly and overwhelm uh, these flashes, especially if you're sending them in one at a time. They can get picked off really easily. And the cool thing about this map is, honestly, like this map can provide so many different strategies if you just look at the design of it. Okay, so good defense there from Rock. He's, he consolidated his flash, consolidated his flashes, and he was able to 
repel these uh, peewees away. And he's going to push away Kulnik on this side too. And one thing, okay, so Kulnik's actually decided to go into the sea. Um, from, at least from what I've seen on this map, I don't think, yeah, it doesn't look like there's any um, underwater metal deposits to take. So it looks like he's just going to go for some tidal farming. And see, you can choose to go see on the outside part or see on the inside part. And then also, I feel like hovers can become a big, uh, be pretty cool on this map. Uh, air second could be also really good. Like there's plenty of stuff to reclaim with the air cons. Like there's tons of rocks and like these all over these ball sacks. So. Plenty of reclaim on the map for uh, air cons to grab. Hovers, they can, uh, I believe they can go up on this train. I believe it's not steep enough so to like block the hovers from going up. So hovers can harass pretty much any area of the map. Um, if I'm correct on that, I'm pretty sure that's how Rock wanted to design it. So basically almost anything is is viable on a map like this. Kuna going for a second bot lab. Doesn't want to switch into vehicles just yet, apparently. Um, and he's going to pump out some peewees at the last second here to defend himself. Going to speed it up just a tad. Nice harassment here from Rock. And he's going to get in back where all the winds are. So this is going to slow cool down, uh, Kulnik down a little bit, but Kulnik's also, he's going to be tidal farming, so losing these wins, um, it does hurt, but it's not going to be game-ending damage as Kulnik, he's still got plenty of tidals in the ocean. While Rock is kind of more focused on land, not really massing uh, sea, sea resources yet. Kunik's approach of this game is more of, it's definitely more of like OTA style. Um, I mean, obviously you probably wouldn't build K-Bots, but in the fact that he's um, going for title, uh, title farming, this is kind of like an OTA, uh, the way you build up your economy in OTA. While Rock's going for more of a, seems like a, a pro T approach. I'm assuming he's going to go advanced before he gets any kind of sea or, or wind farming or any of that stuff. So curious to see how this will play out. Um, there's been a lot of discussion on like Moho Mex is just being a little bit too good. Good pickups here from Rock. Um, so see, now Rock's having issues with energy, and that's probably because he hasn't really started any wind farming or... Um, so he's... And if you don't have enough energy to spend metal, then you're gonna overflow metal like what he's doing. He's getting some nice harassment done with this bomber, though. Very nice. So Kulnik overlooking, uh, building some anti-air, and Rock's getting some good damage with the bomber. He's still alive. Actually, we can track this bad boy. Nope, never mind. Okay, let's slow it down a little bit. Action's really starting to pick up here. All right, Coolnex pushing on this top right side. So Coolnex almost got this second ball sack under control, but he's losing on this side right here. And this is a lot of flashes. I can do some pretty good damage here. And uh, I'm pretty sure Kunik is probably stalling from building so many titles. But the, the thing with what Kunik is doing is it, it really starts to snowball. So the longer Kunik can survive, uh, his economy is going to just skyrocket past rocks.
So as long as Kunik doesn't take like game ending damage, um, which I don't think he really has. Like a lot of this, he can reclaim a lot of this and then just rebuild pretty fast. As long as he doesn't lose his production, he should be fine. And he's doing good harassment on the other side of the map here. So Rock is choosing to go C on the inside. So that's okay. This is going to be pretty interesting. So Rock's chosen to go C on the inside and Kulnix on the outside. So we could see like maybe. Um, Rock pushing from C like on the inside while Ro uh, while Kulnik is trying to harass on the outside part of it, which can make uh, for a pretty interesting game. Rock is trying to kill these peewees with bombers. Not the best targets for those bombers, but um, he just wants to get rid of this harassment. Kulnik picking up another con. Man, he's doing really well with this uh, these peewees here. And if you can look at the economies, they're pretty much the same, but Kunik's almost three times the energy. And once he really like converts that into metal, he's going to be, he's pretty much, he's ahead at the moment. Um, Rock does, so Rock's doing the more traditional Protea approach, which is kind of just get advanced, uh, advanced out pretty early and then just convert your, your T1 mexes to T2. Um, while making like just enough energy to get the advance, you know, you don't really overbuild it. You just build enough to, uh, and then you use that metal that you save from spamming like wins or titles and put those towards moho mexes. So kind of curious to see how this will play out. Cause it seems like, yeah, rock doesn't look like he's interested in title farming or anything just yet. While Kulnik is title farming, but he doesn't have any... It doesn't look like he's going to have T2 on his mind anytime soon because all of that resource is going into these titles. We're gonna, I'm kind of curious to see how this will play out um, and whose economy will shoot up faster. Nice little ball of flashes here from uh, Kulnik. He actually probably could go do some harassment. He's got more. Um, there is a laser tower here, though. Plus, these flashes might be enough to hold that off. I don't think Kulnik really wants to push at this point. He just kind of wants to hold that side. It's basically, he's denying this part of uh, the ball sack here. Um, while well, he's got control of this. So he actually has more territory controlled. And he's kind of denying Rock from this getting this side. So let's take a look at the map. Yeah, see, look, Kunik is going ham on the title production. Look at this. So you can see his, his economy is starting to shoot up quite a bit. But uh, Rock's Boho Mex is there. He's keeping... He's kind of keeping up, but he's still behind um, on metal, but his Moho Mexes are still keeping him pretty close on the metal balance. But the energy production is heavily, heavily in Kulnik's favor, which I think scales way harder later on in the game. So, and Kulnik's gonna go into air now. Bombing Peewee's still. Although, I would like to see him just kind of bomb the metal extractors. Um. I like the path Kulnik chose here. He tried to sneak around the, like this little left side here. But I think Rock's going to be able to stuff this attack. With that laser turret there, should be fine. And it's a nice little donation there from Kulnik. Rock's going to like... Uh, Rock likes free metal, so. And Rock has chosen to go into Pelicans, and he is starting his title farms on the inside. And Pelicans, I believe they can go up these rocks and harass, kind of just like how a hover would. And 
Let's take a look at the action here. Man, Koenig's got a ton of, of peewees here. So he's going to shut that attack down. Rock's got some pelicans here, but that's not going to do much for this many peewees. So yeah, pretty, still pretty even on the metal production. Let's let's take a look at um, the totals here. So yeah, Coolnix doubled his energy. He's at eight eight hundred and fifty k, while Rock's at four hundred and twenty something. Uh, metal though. And Coolnix is ahead on metal by four k as well. So Coolnick's going to clean up this peewee attack. Rock trying to build on Coolnick's ball sack here with his air cons. I don't think Coolnick's going to let him get away with that though. He'll shut that stuff down as soon as he notices. He just might not have a radar there to see that. So that's the only reason this stuff is still here. Sneaky Rock sneaking the Pelicans on the back side. He's probably going to finally spot how many titles are back here and he's going to be like oh shit I'm in huge trouble because yeah the way Coolnix economy is going to scale it's going to be it's going to be a huge boom and honestly Rock has a lot of catching up to do at least on the energy production but Rock's going to switch into Hawks pretty fast he's getting advanced air maybe some bombers I know Rock does like to go uh, rush out advanced bombers pretty fast too to uh, shut down people's production. So we'll see what he decides to choose. Yeah, this pelican's not going to do much with just three. He definitely needs a lot more than just that to uh, if he wants to harass these titles. But at least now he knows that that's there. Although he's only seen a little bit of it, he hasn't seen uh, this uh, monstrosity of titles here. The God of Winds, the God of Titles. Cool Nick. He'll build more wins and titles than units. So let's take an overview. Aircon's coming over to the right side. Rock's trying to get this reclaim, I think, but... Um, I don't know. It's not worth losing your air cons over. Maybe just sending one and see if you can... Yeah, Coolnick's not going to let this happen, I don't think. I think he's spotted it. Here's to see what's going on on the rest of the map. So Rock's still trying to harass you with Pelicans. It's just not going to do much with that. He needs to consolidate those, I think, and then try to go for some kind of push. I do like what both players are doing here. They're building, like, MTs on the outer and inner parts of the water here, and this can actually help deny these deposits and shoot at units that are running by. I think from a spectator's point, this map is pretty pretty cool because there's just so many cool things you can do strategically to harass your opponent on this map but I can see it being pretty nightmarish for a player to control units and like harass like going from inside of the water to the outside of the water you know vice versa It'd be quite a pain in the butt to control everything Yeah, Rock's starting to cap his mohos on his uh, middle left ball sack. And he is rushing those advanced bombers. Still really hasn't capped his, all of his mohos over here. He's, he's a little bit slow to cap the mohos. Surprisingly, usually he's really on top of that. And he is starting to build titles. Not a, like a crazy amount, just enough to where he's not stalling energy. He's keeping up on energy. Um, so he can build uh, a lot of the energy is going into this these farks drain quite a bit 
and this is like Farks are your your tech two build power. Rock spamming air cons. This is great to do in the late game. It's like probably the best and cheapest way to build, get a bunch of build power that's super mobile. You can get this air cons can cross the map pretty fast. So you can kind of do some cool things with those later in the game. Um, still fighting over this uh Top right side, and uh, Rock's gonna go for a big push here with flashes. The bottom left. Oh, I mean, now Coolnix he's queued up the the missile tower, uh, the missile tower farm. So it's gonna be pretty hard to break this position with the zone flashes here with the missile towers helping out. But yeah, see, look, these Rock's missile towers are gonna. So if Kulnik wants to push up, he can't really because he, Rock has these missile towers in place to help shoot. And they can hit on this land, so it's pretty nice to have that. And Rock has switched into Hawks, which is going to shut pretty much all any kind of attack Kulnik uh, is going to do up here is going to get shut down. There's no anti-air, so... We'll just slowly pick these peewees off. Rock trying to get some uh, laser towers up here. Lots of reclaim back rock. Rock has control of now. And Kulnik, he's built a bunch of skeeters. I'm curious to see. So you can harass these little side mixes with these skeeters, I believe. Honestly, would have loved to see him do that a lot earlier, but also. If he shows Skeeters too early, it kind of gives away his strategy. Oh, he's trying to bomb the commander. Oh. oh we don't have the health bars. Oh, Kulnik is at half. Man, that was close. So it took out the advanced K-Bot, uh, but the advanced air is still up building Hawks. Uh, so it looked like he was trying to go for a commander snipe. Didn't get it, though. Nicky bombed a little, maybe the elevation came into play there, going over these hills here, and it kind of messed up the bombing run for Rock. I think he wanted to snipe him, because I think, I think Rock knows he's behind, at least on energy. I don't think Kulnik has, uh, uh, I mean, he has 6,000 energy already. So I'm not sure if he's fully converting all that as he doesn't really have any advanced mohos. He's about to start these now, or advanced metal makers, I mean. Let's take a look at Rock's vision. So this is what it looks like on Rock's side of the map. Doesn't really have any radar coverage of Kulnik at all. Um, and honestly, same for Kulnik. Uh, doesn't really see, doesn't have any advanced radars up in good spots just yet. So, cool Nick trying to push through these uh, water towers or harassing these flashes as they go through. I just don't see this attack doing too much. I mean, uh, actually, I mean, if these flashes can make it through uh, all these water turrets, there's not really much defense on the land part over here. He can take all this out, but he decides to pull back. And I mean, Rock does have Hawks, so he could fly those over and. Yeah, so see these Skeeters are harassing them. Uh, the advanced extractor here is going to take that out. So doing some good harassment with those Skeeters. Rock's really going into advanced air. He's got one on bombers, one on hawks. Let's take a look at the mega map. This is kind of so Rox has complete control of the inside. 
I'd say Kulnik has control of the outside. Here's to see if any of that advantage will come into play Navy-wise. We'd love to see some advanced sea, like Conquerors and Millenniums, Archers, which is the, the flagship to fight off the Hawks with a bunch of Skeeters. Um, you can harass this whole... You can bombard this whole thing here with uh, Millenniums. You literally take out everything. Honestly, sea play on this map can be very, very powerful. Although it is very expensive, so... Um, you kind of have to choose a path. You can't, like, branch into everything until maybe later when you have more economy to support it. But... Um, looks like both players are kind of choosing to go into the advanced air route. Air is definitely the most mobile, so it's like... It'll give you the best way to attack and defend yourself with those hawks. And then maybe you can transition into advanced sea later. I'm not saying it's like impossible. I mean, you could go for the advanced sea play and it probably would work pretty well. Um, but you would have to mix archers in if you want to deal with these hawks, like for sure. And also, Hawks and Vamps, they are stealth fighters, so that does come into play. Um, so like if you have targeting facility, all that stuff, and radar coverage, it, it really doesn't matter with the Hawks. Rocks, they need... You kind of need actual vision of them to, to make them easy to take out. Because Hawks, they are fragile. But... The power behind him is the stealth. It's um, especially when you do like this. You do like this kiting micro where you go back and forth. It's really hard to get vision of the hawks to actually kill them. And if they if they ever push in, you know, he's he's like, whoa, I gotta back up. He can just back up and leave, and there's not really any consequence to that. So. Okay, so I like Rock is trying to mix some Conquerors in. This could be pretty deadly. Okay, here comes the bombing run from Rock. Does take out the advanced air, and he does get a Moho. Um, didn't get the advanced K-Bot though. His bombers weren't quite stacked enough for this, uh, for it to take out the K-Bot lab there. But yeah, like I said, this map can be pure chaos for a player because there's just look at look how much stuff is happening around the map in all different sides. Like you're dealing stuff with the, with on the outside, you're dealing stuff with on the inside, you're dealing with stuff on the land. I honestly think this map plays out pretty cool in TA. Honestly, probably better in TA than it does in Supreme Commander so far, from what I've seen. We got ourselves quite a game here between uh, these two juggernauts. Let's just take a look. So the problem with these Conquerors, they do need, like, vision. Um... See, Rock just doesn't have any vision of this stuff, so it's like, can't really shoot what he can see. So he needs, like, scouts constantly flying over this area to, for these Conquerors to get any benefit. So he does have scouts, but he's just not uh, quite using them. Meanwhile, Coolnex pretty much rebuilt his air. He's got a second factory. He's got pills coming out. His economy is really starting to boom. He's shot ahead. He's at 10k energy, 200 metal. Rock's at about 142 and about 5k energy. So Rock's half the energy income, and he's down about 50, 55 metal.
Um, but I do think Rock has better unit mixture at the moment with... Uh, so the hills are actually blocking these uh, Conquerors a little bit. They can't really deal with these LLTs. Here we go. So Rock is, he's finally starting to fly scouts over, which could probably help. Oh, I mean, this is not what you want to do though. It's getting a little too close to all the missile towers and that's a bunch of missile towers from Koenig. Uh, and he's trying to just go straight for the advanced lab. Oh, I would like to see him like just shell all these defenders down first. Because if he kills all the defenders, then he can kind of it makes it way easier to push forward after that. Um, honestly, trying to control all these units at one time, it is, it's very hard. I can tell you that from like a player's perspective, it is, um, it is hard to control all these units at the same time. Even with control groups, it's, uh, it's not as easy as it, as you think or as it looks. Rock doing a good, he's doing a good job. He's pretty much capped all of his mexes with mohos at this point. So Rock kind of still relying on those mohos, but he's switching into T2 economy on the sea, which is these Colossus. Uh, Colossus, they are aircraft carriers, but they do provide about, uh, I don't know the exact amount of energy, maybe like between 300, 300 to 500 energy per one. So it's a good way to farm energy in the late game is just build these Colossus and that's why you always see that. Um, but you can also turn these on and they have repair pads. See, you can see Rock's Hawks are going onto the repair pad. Um, Koenig using that opportunity though to swipe, swipe in there and take those Hawks out. So Rock is, he's kind of on the inside of this vagina. Coolnick has got territory on the outside of the vagina. Um, yeah, and like, cool, look at Coolnick's really starting to scale up here. Uh, he's got a nice ambusher. This is pretty, this will deal with those conquerors getting too close. Pelicans versus Skeeters. Pelicans counter Skeeters. So that is a lot of Skeeters. If, if you get the Skeeters close enough to where they can use their laser turrets, um, they do all right. But uh, eventually these Pelicans are going to take all these Skeeters out. As you can see, the, the Skeeter missiles don't actually hit the Pelicans, and that's like their main damage. So... That's basically why they counter him. All right, bomb run coming in from Rock here. He's gonna take out that, this is probably like the fourth time he's taken out that same advanced air in that spot. Pretty frustrating for Kulnik, but uh, honestly, he's still looking pretty good. Rock's only got two advanced airs. Meanwhile, Kulnik has about three or four. And just look at this, look at this. The missile towers and the the title farming. So Kulnik, he is worried about these hawks backdooring all these titles. Honestly, that'd be a great use of rocks hawks. But uh, Kulnik, he's ready for it. take a look okay so rock is he's starting to build on the outside part of the water okay and he's gonna go for subs oh this could be very scary for Kulnik if he's not ready for it he doesn't really have any um 
scorp launchers or anything to stop subs at the moment. Uh, he does have advanced C now though, and he's getting his own Colossus out, so he's going to boost that energy even further. But he can switch these into those advanced sub killers. Uh, I forget what they're called. Piranhas, that's right. So he can make piranhas, he can build subs out of his T1 factory here. And unfortunately he has his Skeeter spotting on this side and not up on the top right, so he doesn't know about these subs um, that are coming. So Rock mixing in some archers, He's he knows he's a little bit behind. Uh, on the Hawk production, so he needs archers to kind of compensate for that. Rock has have, he actually has a bunch of peewees here pushing on the right side. I didn't realize uh, he was this far pushed up over here. But uh, Konaki's got Rockos, which outrange these peewees, so he, if he plays the range right. Uh, kind of sending them into death here. I mean, if you brought us Hawks over to support these Rockos, that'd be fine. But kind of just sending them into the meat grinder here, into the EMG blasts. The pew 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 pew, the pew pew. Okay, huge engagement from both sides here. Pelicans clashing, the Hawks are coming in for Rock. I think Rock is a little bit sharper with the unit control. He's uh, he's just reacting to things a little bit faster. And but here comes Kulnik. He's bringing his Hawks over. They're nice and split up, so the Flax won't just like. Oh, and he's just ignoring the archers and dive bombing on Rock's. Nice move there from Kulnik, taking out all of the Hawks from Rock there. Honestly, that hurts. That hurts. Uh, that hurts Rock there. I think that was like his one advantage. But I think the Hawk numbers are starting to become way in Coolnick's favor here, as he has just more production. And it's like, yeah, missile towers. They're they're anti-air, but they're not the best versus the Hawks, like they'll do okay, but honestly, Hawks kill them so fast, so you really need flackers. It's the best way to deal with them. When I dive bombing on the Colossus, uh, he's trying to hurt Rock's energy production. I don't know if it's worth losing all your Hawks over though. But, I mean, as you can tell, like, this this T1 spam of economy with the titles has really paid off for Kulnik. Like, he's completely skyrocketed in economy. Um, so this is, this is the power of scaling your energy early. Uh, it sets you up big later on. I'm pretty sure Kulnik could even build more of these at Moho Metamic. I'm pretty sure he's accessing quite a bit still. And just, like, he, he's queuing up like three to four advanced K-Bots. He's got four to five advanced air labs. He's building an anti-nuke. He's, he's getting ready for basically everything. Rock doesn't even have that on his mind just yet. He's building his third advanced air just now. I think what's keeping Rock in this game is just good unit control. It's not, he doesn't really throw away his Hawks. Very good at controlling them. He's got flackers in good spots. Yeah, and these archers definitely helping uh, him stay in the game against Kulnix Hawks here. Nope. No player actually investing in T2 uh, land units, which is... I can kind of see why, why they wouldn't on a map like this. Uh, I just don't think there's enough space on these land paths to really do... 
I don't know, it's just, it's easy to choke all this stuff off and make it, it's gonna be hard to do any kind of push on the land. So it's better to just use cheaper units to do it. Okay, rocks, uh, Kulnik's gotta be careful here. There's a bunch of uh, archers. Um, also, 4.5 is basically on its way. Um, we're in the testing phases, but it's gonna be out pretty soon. So I mean, this might be one of the last 4.4 games I ever cast. Um, but I believe, I don't know if all flackers they're gonna get an HP buff, but uh, I think that'll help quite a bit. Uh, I do feel like the flackers, um, they just die a little bit too quick to Hawks. I think they need to have, just to be a little bit more durable. Cause like a handful of hawks can really just one shot one. And then they can just back off and use air repair pads to heal them back to full, stuff like that. So yeah, Kulnix really chiseled down rocks. Like rock used to have control of all this stuff on the inside. Starting to chisel away at him here. Yeah, Rock just needs to, I don't know, it's, I feel like he's living a lot off of the reclaim. Um, if he can find a way to scale his energy faster, he really needs to catch up on that department, because that's where Kulnik is really just taking off. Here's some subs. Rock. We'll see if the subs will do any, uh, any kind of damage here, but these plants are unguarded. Um, and it just, it's pretty slow if there's not any assistance on the, on the, the labs. And yeah, Coolnick knows that these subs are coming now, so it's, uh, let's see how he reacts to it. He's building his own sub, so. I mean, these subs are, they're doing, doing a lot of damage, but he wants to get into the heart of Coolnick's economy, which is the tidal farms, these Colossus. That's, those are the juicy targets that Brock wants here with these subs. Um, but he's doing a good job clearing a path through. The problem is once Coolnick's subs gets to this point, he has the vision of rock sub, so he always get the first trade, and that's usually what the deciding factor is in a sub fight: is who has vision of whose sub. Um, also, if you can get a surround on him with skeeters, you can trap the subs, and then your your sub can shoot shoot the subs down. Doesn't see not really much happening on any other spot on the map right now so let's just check out see how far these subs can get into the economy so cool Nike does have advanced sub killer the piranha and with these skeeters kind of these skeeters can absorb sub shots so it can kind of defend this piranha from getting hit okay huge push here in the center No player choosing to go into hovers, which is uh, which is surprising because I think they're pretty they're pretty solid unit uh, or solid tech solid tech choice on a map like this. You can build wombats or those nixers, which is like those long range missile units to take out this defenses on the shores. No, even with like less Hawk production, somehow Rock has this a similar amount to Kulnik. Even though Kulnik has like double the factories. And Rock using his flacker ships pretty well. Uh, and actually wins the Hawk fight there, which is gonna delay. Like this game is still looking pretty good for Rock. He's just uh 
He's just so behind on resources. But I feel like he's playing a good game, like he's doing... Maybe like better unit control overall. Okay, so Kulnik going into other techs now. We have Big Bertha's coming out. This will help chisel away at this, uh, at all this stuff in the ocean here, in the sea. It looks like Kulnik's gonna go for a land push here. Honestly, this great targets would be these flax. You take out these flax. Um, then Kulnik can actually bring his hawks over here. Rock trying to rush a sentinel up, which is a heavy laser tower. You know, two to three, two or three of those would shut down pretty much most of these flash attacks here. So, and the big Bertha's out of everything it could shoot at, it's choosing to shoot over here. Um, I don't think Kulnik has set any targets for this just yet. Kind of curious to see. Can I see his the range of this thing? Okay, so let's select this unit. Okay, so this is the range of it. So he can hit. He can hit over here. He can probably kill these uh, advanced airs. He can kill all these these C labs. Um, he just needs to scout and spot all that stuff. And cool next, he's using the power of those air, air cons in the late game, and he's going to be pumping out subs. I think this might be. This is such a great move here from Kulnik. This is gonna probably catch Rock off guard. As he doesn't really have any sub defense at all. I mean, he could build, build sub killers out of this pretty fast, but um, when you have this many subs as Kulnik does here, um, by the time you spot these are coming, the, the damage will probably already be done by the time he gets enough sub killers to deal with it. Here comes a bomb run. Takes out the Bertha and takes out the one building, so... Good denial there from Rock. Um, because BBs, they get... Those big Berthas, they get pretty scary once they get vet. And they really start taking out all your production. It's really hard to stay in the game when that happens, so... Big Berthas can just end the game straight up. Kulnik is, he's ready for nukes. He's got two anti-nukes. Surprised he hasn't really built any of his own yet. And he, it seems like Kulnik has actually hit the unit limit. Uh, um, which is pretty crazy. But, um, he's probably going to have to start destroying some of these, uh, water. So you can self-destruct this stuff. You might want to self-destruct some titles and water missile towers here. To free up some unit cap. Honestly, we might need to raise the unit cap, guys, because uh, in a couple of my free-for-alls, I also hit unit cap pretty fast. Maybe raising it to 2,000 would be good. I don't know how much more lag that would cause, but I think in this day and age, 2023, we'd probably be all right. And here come the subs from Cool Nick. Uh, Rock is building tor uh, torpedo planes. It's got the lancets in there. Doing a great job at killing the subs, actually. Wow, this actually didn't do... I mean, he did take out a bunch of titles, though. And he's clearing out a lot of these missile towers. Probably took out some archers, maybe. Um, and see Rock, he's, he's trying to run the Colossus that he does have. He's trying to hide them. Here comes Coolneck with his hawks. So while Rock's dealing with the subs, he's swooping in with his hawks. Perfect timing. Um, let's take a look at these archers here. 29 kills on this archer. So when these flax have vision of hawks, and they're not abusing the stealth, they do amazing. Like, uh, just look at that. They do great work. The hard part is just having vision of those hawks. For those uh, flackers to do their work. 
And uh, I know that that's something I've complained about, but there's probably ways I can deal with that better that I just need to incorporate in my play. Ooh, fighting over the flacker though, I don't know. Rock's getting good trades here, and he's gonna probably win the Hawk fight again because of that. Oh man, it's unfortunate. So yeah, one thing I've learned is uh, it's really hard to end the game when the opponent has more Hawks than you because they're just so mobile. It's basically the end game unit to build uh, in OTA and Protea. It's like the best unit in the game because of their mobility, their stealth. Um, they can hit land and air. It's the end game unit. And that's how it's always been and that's probably how it's always going to be. Which, uh, you know, which is totally fine, in my opinion, but... Because you have to think about, you know, you have to be able to end the game somehow, right? You can't just have... Uh, there needs to be units in the game that are designed to do that, and I think the Hawk is a perfect unit for that. So cool neck, he's pushing in both sides here. So Rock has to put his hawks over here to deal with the rock as well, and then cool neck can kind of push here on the left side. And there's just a ton of shit going on. All right, Rock's going in for a bomb run. Let's see what he can do. Cool neck's got a decent amount of flackers though, so not as much damage as Rock would probably want. I mean, he does take out a couple of advanced airs, so that'll slow. We'll knock down quite a bit, but he could probably rebuild those pretty fast with all these air cons. And Rock, those piranhas, they actually ended up getting all the way to Kulnik's shipyard and killing it off. So Rock denying Kulnik once again on that inside sea area. He's completely denied him. And Rock is still trying to like pick away at this outer part with subs and skeeters. Seems like he's given up on the subs and he's going full Skeeters. Okay, so Hawks. Ox are coming in from rock. So a tip with hawk control, when you when you try to group them all up, they actually like to cluster into one spot, which is awful. You don't want that to happen. So you have to let them all get to that, that move wherever you put the move order, you have to let them group up there. And then you hit the, the stop key. And then the hawks will spread out. And then you can, and then you can move them to uh, to to move around and do good control with it. Otherwise, they'll be all stacked up in one spot, and then uh, one or two flackers could probably kill like a hundred hawks within a you know two seconds if they're all stacked. So you do want to have your hawks spread out, and there's a certain micro to do that. I love Rock's use. He actually has. Um, these advanced construction subs and he's using these to get all of the reclaim. There's not really much Kune can do about that unless he builds torpedo planes. I'm surprised these Skeeters are, I mean, <laughs> Kune has got a bunch of subs here, so the Skeeters are probably not going to do too much, especially if he like spreads them out a little bit. And then, um, once he sends those up to this this production up here, Kulnik's got another big Bertha up, and he is pushing forward. Oh, this is okay. So it looks like Rock he's ran out of archers. Um, this is looking actually pretty scary for Rock here. He doesn't have any more uh, flacker ships to defend himself from Hawk. So, and Kulnik's got the superior Hawk numbers by far. 
And he's really starting to push in here. He's killing Colossus. He's hitting the heart of Rock's economy. The uh, the energy, the energy, the juice. Rock trying to do anything he can with those bombers. He does bomb the Bertha. I missed it. Sorry, guys. Um, there's just too much stuff happening in this game right now. <laughs> it's actually insane. Good targeting there from Kulnik. He snipes the Flacker ship. And he's slowly pushing forward. Oh, target that Flacker. Quick. There he goes. He's he's doing it. Yeah. And now Rock is down to 3,000 energy. Probably not even enough to fuel all of his advanced air production. Cool Nick's at 21,000 energy, 400 or 320 income. So he's basically dub doubling rock and metal and I don't even know at this point how much energy. Even the pelicans are breaking through. Rock's trying to do his best to defend here. Can Kulnik pull, put the nail in the coffin? I mean, he's going for the production now. There's not any anti-air here. Rock's saying, well played, man. I mean, yeah, great great game from Kulnik here. Showing the power of T1 spam economy. Rock's saying he didn't check the center aisle, and he didn't see the massive resources in the back. Yeah, he... If that stuff goes unscouted and you don't notice your opponent's doing that, it's it's pretty brutal. Although, I mean, it is cool, Nick. So he probably should expect that. I don't know what he's expecting, uh, what else cool Nick would do. That's really like his go-to strategy is to spam T1 economy. So yeah, Rock taps out and cool Nick takes the W. So congrats to Nick. Played a hell of a game. Um, and yeah, GG. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I do plan on... I think my next cast is going to be a bar cast. We'll see. I'm definitely going to do more TA as well. Uh, I even wanted to do an Escalation game, but uh, I did... If anybody's from Escalation, I, I am looking for some good replays. Something that gets in the later stages to show off the T3 and the Tier 4 uh, units. Um, preferably like a 1v1, maybe like a 2v2, 3, like a smaller team game uh, would be nice. So if anybody has a great Escalation replay for me, um, I am looking for that to cast. So... Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that game between Cool Nick and Rock, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Take care. Have a great morning, afternoon, evening. See ya.